What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. And guys, you know, I typically do like a funny commercial or an intro to these things, but but sometimes I want to have a serious conversation with African-American men about doing everything you need to do to become successful. And then at the same time, losing it all behind stupidity. And for some of you guys who grew up in our generation, the 92 draft and the 92, 93, I remember that draft because Shaquille O'Neal was taken by the Orlando Magic, right? Alonzo Mourning came right after that. Then it was Christian Leitner, shooting guard Jimmy Jackson, who had some really good years in Dallas. And, you know, Robert Ory came out that same year. If you guys remember, Clarence Witherspoon came out that year. But the best guard that came out of that class was not Tracy Murray. And Tracy Murray used to light it up. It was a guy by the name of Latrell Sprewell. And he fell all the way to pick number 24, going to the Golden State Warriors. I'll tell Latrell Sprewell was, um, you know, really good shooting guard at that particular time. You know, didn't play organized ball until like I think the junior or senior year. And I mean, he was just, he was off the chain. He had a high motor. You know, he was athletic. He could ball. For those of y'all who remember Spree, Spree could ball, right? Not only was he balling with the Warriors, he went to the Knicks, helped them get to the NBA Finals in that short year. And then also, uh, if you can remember, that, that one Minnesota Timberwolves team that had Kevin Garnett and Sam Cassell that went really deep into the Western Conference Finals. He was on that team too, and he played uh, somewhat decent, right? And, you know, Spree, man, you know, a good athlete, but what stopped Latrell Spreewell back, all right? If I were to be honest, what's his attitude? Spreewell was a cancer in the locker room, all right? And you couldn't tell him shit. And that was the case when he choked coach PJ Par uh, Carlissimo in a damn practice. He was suspended for like, you know, I believe in 97, 68 games that year. All right. Like, imagine that somebody would choke a coach. Right. But you know what I mean? In, in today's game, that doesn't happen. But you think that Spree or Spreewell, as we used to call him, you would think that he would have learned. Right. But again, he had that attitude, which I think stemmed from his childhood. And that last year in Minnesota, which was, you know, the remarkable defeat, I would say. Okay. He was offered a three year, $21 million contract extension. All right. And that he felt insulted. Now, let's just be honest at that time. Spreewell had shot like 41% from the field. Okay, which is typically what he shot, 32% from three, all right? He averaged like 12.8 points a game. And he said, you know what? Um, I got a family to feed. This is ridiculous. I don't want to help y'all win the, you know, um, the championship, okay? And he got, you know, some other offers. I believe Dallas, San Antonio. Uh, but he, you know, basically he didn't decide to do it. And so what ended up happening was, um, he stopped playing basketball altogether, okay? And he made $97 million in his NBA career. Let's fast forward to 2021. He's been out of the league for 17 years. Here's the trail spree roll right now, okay? Unfortunately, he has a one-year-old granddaughter, and I'll read it here. Take music! Hi, right, everyone. My name is Latrell Sprewell. Yes, correct. The former NBA player. I am in need. My granddaughter is battling cancer. So any donations will help my granddaughter be cancer. She is very one year old in this fight. Anything will do, but I would just like to save her life. She means the world to me and her mother. Thank you for everyone taking the time to donate. She has been diagnosed with leukemia. Okay. I'm Latrell Sprewell. I was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's been home to me since I was a child. Okay. Now, from a guy I grew up watching, you know, playing the sport. A guy who averaged over 18 points a game, four assists, four rebounds, playoff career averages of 19 points a game. 
a guy who went to four all-star games, a guy that made $97 million is so broke now that he can not help his own granddaughter with the money. Now, I don't know if he was spending money before and, and ran out and things like that, but I want to talk to brothers out there. And this is going to be a heartfelt message, man. Number one, we have a lot of people in our circles. Once we make it, and I believe that Spreewell came from a home that didn't have a father in it, if I'm not mistaken. When we make it, all of a sudden, a lot of people have their hands out. Okay? A lot of folks have their hands out. And when they have their hands out, we feel like we have to help them. Okay? So we have people that are benefiting from our success. And we're helping women. We're helping family. We're helping niggas from the neighborhood. Because we think that money is always going to continue to come. The sad reality is that the money doesn't always come. And we fail to understand that there's going to come a time where you're not going to be able to play sports. You know, even now I'm 39 and I'll be 40 this year. And, you know, I, I looked at all the money I've blown, even when, not even on just YouTube or something like that. I'm talking about when I was working 20, 25, just, you know, always thinking like, well, there's another check. I can always get it back. I can always get it back. Well, th there are cases where you can't always get it back. It doesn't work like, like life doesn't work like that. Like dollars have to be accounted for. Your wealth has to be accounted for. And, and they're going to come a time where you can't even work. And if you play basketball and you're out of the league, when you're 35 years old, you're still a young man. What do you do? You don't have no other skills, you know, unless you're coaching or basketball camp. You're not going to be making the, the, the same amount you're making in your lifestyle has to change dramatically because you can't afford to live like you used to live. Unless you're Kobe Bryant and you have investments. But the next thing I want to talk to you about is attitude, right? A lot of black men that have come up um, that play sports. I've seen a lot of brothers, man, go out the league, go out of boxing. You know, go out of sports because of a bad attitude. Okay? Because of a bad attitude. And this is this is the situation I want to talk about here. Because of a bad attitude, you've cost yourself opportunities. Nobody wants to work with you. And then nobody doesn't want no one wants to help you. Okay? Lastly, as black men, if you don't look out for yourself, nobody will look out for you. Let that be clear. We talked about Adrian Peterson blowing 100 mil. Antoine Walker, you know, blowing so much money. Allen Iverson, had it not been for the Reebok deal that he had, which is a lifetime deal, he'd be broke. Nobody's going to help you, man. You know, there, there's there's no things that are set up for black men. I would argue that they're gonna you, you're going to have a lot more people that's going to help the girl get the glue out, the, out of her head than help his daughter or granddaughter with leukemia, with cancer. And black men have to really understand the value of investing. You know, even me, I'm, I'm starting to look like I've always looked at it. But, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, this money has to go here every month. Money has to go here every month. Money has to go here. I have to get in that circle where people are doing things. You know, there's always going to be broke people that, that, that can't do nothing. That I can't help everybody. You know, Latrell Sprewell can't help. A lot of you brothers can't help everybody, man. You have to put yourself first and your needs first. Otherwise, you're going to end up like him. And I would hate for that to happen to you. I really would, you know. But guys, what do you think? It's your boy LJ Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I really appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe, hit the bell. Check out the first coming. Pin to the top. Check out the Black Men Are Perfect t-shirts. And as you know, the buffoonery remains at an all-time high. I'm